Good morning, housewives. And a very special good morning to the housewife who lives at number 26, Fairmar Road, Derby. Yes, it's you, Mrs. Beryl Hesseltine. Your great day. Because I've got birthday greetings for you from your husband, Charles, your son, Harry, not forgetting the girls next door. And they've chosen for you Kenneth McKellar singing Song of the Clyde, and here he is. I'll sing of a river I'm happy beside the song that... Hey, that never sent a book. Here's your tea, Children mother. Oh. They've not played that record of mine yet. What? It must be at the bottom of the pile, my name. Them curtains could do with a wash. Oh, shut up, mother. Was it bloody lordship, then? She wants to go up to him with a wet dishcloth and wring it over his face. That'd get him up. He wants a bloody good idea. That'd move him. I've shouted him three times. That'd shift him. <laughs> He'd have to get up there. Every morning the same. Hey, you up there? Come on, get out of it. Go up to him. Go up and kick him out, he's bloody idle. She lets him do just as he likes. Talk to him yourself. Dear me! Bloody well get up! Billy! Your bald egg stone cold! Well, come on then! It's nearly half past nine! I'll not tell you again. All right, I'm coming. Today's a day for big decisions. I'm going to start writing my novel. 2,000 words every day. I'm going to start getting up in the morning. Yes. Today's a day for big decisions. Don't go making fresh tea for him. You've got enough to do without cooking six breakfasts every morning. That was a blacky postman just went past the window. Either they're all darkies now. There's blacky bus conductors and blacky nurses. They can't get work, you know, in South Africa. Yes. Go on, ignorant. Knock it over. The cabinet change is imminent, I see. You'll be bloody imminent if you don't start getting up in the morning. Oh, good morning, Father. Come on, get on with it, lad. You're half an hour late for work already. Good morning, Mater. How are you, darling? She lets him do just as he likes. Now, your most obedient servant, Mum. And you can stop that bloody game. Hey, it's you I'm talking to, Opalus. What time did you get in last night? Uh, if it was last night, more like this bloody morning, I should think. I really couldn't say about half past eleven, I suppose. Yeah, more like one o'clock, never mind your half past eleven. You start coming in at night. I'm not having you gallivanting about all hours. Why are you having gallivanting about, then? I'll give you the gear if you answer me back. And what were you doing down at Foley Bottoms at nine o'clock last night? Who said I was down at Foley Bottoms? Never mind who says or doesn't say you were there. And it wasn't that barber you were with, either. He wants to make up his mind who he's going with. He goes out with too many lasses. He's like a bloody lass himself. Well, you want to tell whoever saw me to mind their own teasing business? Tis our business. And don't you be so cheeky. And if Barbara's coming for a tea tomorrow, I shall tell her, so don't think I won't. I've never played fair with that girl. I'm surprised she bothers with you. He's not old enough to stop out after a bloody night. Oh, it's every bloody night alike. So? You start coming in at a proper bloody time. Three. I think you want to live somewhere else. Perhaps I will do. You what? I've been offered a job in London. Eee, there's been a lot of twins born lately. I said, I have been offered a job in London. What bloody job? How do you mean you've been offered a job? A job script writing. Script writing? He can't write his own bloody names so that anybody can read it. How do you mean script writing? I've told you, Boone. Danny Boone, the television comedian. He's in town today opening the new supermarkets. I sent him some of my scripts. He's read them. He's read them and he likes them. Send me this letter. Look. He's offered me a job in London, script writing. He likes my material. What do you mean, he likes your material? This is Danny Boone. Right. And this pepper pot is my material. Right? Right? Now, oh, Danny Boone sees me flaming material, so he flaming will ask me for it. Here, oh. here, here. Watch your language, flaming this and flaming that. He's gone too far. Look, uh, do you want to know or don't you? Because if you want to know, I'll tell you. And if you don't want to know, I'll shut up. Right, try again. This you just eat your breakfast. Let's get your mucky self washed. And get to bloody work. Why don't you see he gets washed and dressed before he comes down in the morning? She wants to burn that raincoat of his. She wants to burn it. Fling it on fire back. Then you'd have to get dressed. Spoil well, him all your life. Oh, I knew it would be my fault. I don't know. He won't have a job anywhere. Never mind London if he goes on at this rate. He's not going to London. It's another of his stories. He can't say two words to anybody without telling a lie. 
Hey, what's he telling that woman down at the fish shop about me having my leg off? <laughs> you want to look as if I've had my leg off. We'll have to stop all this making things up, Billy. There's no sense in it at your age. We never know where we are with you. I mean, you're too old for things like that now. I don't know what we're going to do with you. And keep your hands off my bloody razor in future. You can't call anything your own in this house, can you? Hey, shirt. And when are you going to unlock that wardrobe? Why? Because I say so. Well, I've got all my private things in there. Never mind things. I've got shirts and socks and pants and I don't know what waiting to go in there. It's not natural to keep a wardrobe locked up. A lad of your age. It's my wardrobe. Not your wardrobe. We'll pay for it. It's our wardrobe. You'll get it unlocked and you'll leave it unlocked if you don't mind. Never mind whether he minds or he doesn't mind. If it isn't unlocked when I get back, I'll smash the bloody thing open. It's a good heart that says nail, but a better heart that thinks none. I don't think. Those who bring sunshine into the lives of others cannot keep it from themselves. What did you do, Larry? Spend the postage money? Was that the size of it? You were given these calendars to post last Christmas. All right, Billy boy, on your feet. William Terence Fisher, I have a warrant for your arrest on the charge that you did willfully and knowingly misappropriate 270 calendars. The property of your employers, Mrs. Shandrack and Duxbury, funeral directors. Come on, lad, come on. All right. I've just been thinking, I might as well give me notice in today, uh, if I'm going to London. You want to make up your mind what you do want to do? Yeah. Work for Danny Boone. How do you know, Billy? You've never done that sort of thing before. You can't switch and change and swap about just when you feel like it. You've got your living to earn now. You worry so much. That's right, Gran. That's right, Mum. An Ashanti tribesman had a small son. Good morning, Billy. Oh, good morning. Now, you do know that's the late Mr. Parkin you've got in there? Yes. Because we don't want another recurrence of last week's fiasco, do we? Have you checked the oil at all? I have. Extraordinary time to come to work, Fisher. I'm sorry, Mrs. Shadrach. Only uh, I spilled all that water down my arm. I've been to the doctor's. Must be going home time. Fisher's here. How long's Big Ed been here? All night, I should think. Where do you say you'd been? I've been to the doctor's. You've been to the doctor's? I've been to the doctor's. Well, can you tell these good people why you've been to the doctor's? I don't like the look of my wife. I wish I'd come with you. I hate the sight of my... <laughs> Haven't you people got any work to do? Uh, yes, yes, Mrs. Shadrach. Trying to run an up-to-date organisation here, you know. There's too much laxity. Far too much laxity. Oh, Stan, I'd like to see your ashes list. Hey, you want to watch it, though. He's been going through all the books this morning. He's in a terrible temper. Is he now? He hasn't balanced the petty cash yet, has he? Well, I don't know. How much of your fiddle, then? Oh, shut your head. He thinks that postage money's part of his wages. Anyway, I've got something unpleasant to say to our Mr. Shadrach today. You've got something unpleasant to say to our Mr. Shadrach today? Anything I say to Mr. Shadrach would be unpleasant. Kindly leave the undertakers. No, honestly, I'm giving him a notice today. You are? <laughs> Wonderful comedian. Shadrach and Duxbury, funeral furnishers. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Man. When was the last time? Well, Shadrach at a funeral fleet. Shadrach to funeral fleet. Are you receiving me? Nova? Receiving you loud and clear. Over. State your position, please. State your position. Over. 
We're just turning into Sheepgate from the memorial. Traffic at Coal Lane Junction's owner's is up a bit over. Suggest you divert cortege, repeat. Suggest you divert cortege down new bypass. Acknowledge, please. Roger, Anna. Come on, shift. The doctor's papers amongst all this rubbish. What's your writing to Godfrey Wynn for? Oh, shut up. Oh, it's not him, it's his mother. Housewife's choice. Hey! Dear sir, could you play just a song at twilight for me, as this is my favourite song? Well, you just bloody mind. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, love. Uh, is that the Millen Hotel? Uh, reception, please. My husband often used to sing it to me when we were a little bit younger than we are now. Uh, Get it off him, Martha. Come on, No, 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 listen to this bit. Come on. No, no, hey. My son also writes songs, but I suppose there's not much chance for him, as he has not had the training. We are just ordinary folk. Signed, A. Fisher, Mrs. Hatch. Come on. Well, I'm not ordinary folk, even if she is. Hello? Uh, reception? Uh, can I speak to Mr. Boone, please? Uh, uh, Danny Boone? Uh, will, you, will you tell him it's Mr. Fisher? I've got that job. You haven't. They're script writers start next week. You jammy devil, how much are you paying you? Well, uh, we haven't discussed terms yet, but uh, it's a hell of a lot more than I'm getting here. I'm sorry, caller. Mr. Boone's not taking any calls at the moment. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Boone? Uh, uh, Fisher, this end. Uh, uh, oh, very well, thank you. How are you? Oh, that's mar marvellous, yes. Look, I, I don't want to bother you at the moment, but I was wondering, uh, would uh, three o'clock this afternoon be a good time for me to come and see you? Oh, oh good. Here, I'll bring some of my material. Of course I will, yes. Uh, uh then Nell Gwyn Sweet, is it? Hey, yes, I, I thought so. Oh, oh that's marvellous. Well, uh, look forward to seeing you then. Oh, fine. Bye. Success. Good morning. Oh, it's all right. Sorry, my mother. Only I brought the key down because I should be out this afternoon. Well, what did you want to come down here for? Could have got in through the window, couldn't I? You're not getting in through no window. How's your father, Billy? Is he still in hospital? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, he's quite comfortable, though. What's the special say about his leg, then? Well, it might have to come off, but they haven't seen the x-rays yet, so there's still a good chance. Oh. How's your sister? Oh, fine, fine. What bloody sister? Sister, oh, she's very well. Oh, she's very well as well. How's your husband? Oh, he's well too. Is he still on the bus? Yes, he's still on the bus. He's lovely, I am. Mm. April is the cruelest man for smile can make it better. It takes 60 muscles to frown, but only 13 to smile June. Kindness in another's troubles, courage in your own, August. Think all you speak, but speak not all you think, December. Speak all you think, but think not all you speak. Speak all you speak, but speak not all you think. Right now, you will. Oh, naff off, Stan. Hey, no writing mucky words on the wall. Look, get lost, will ya? Bet you're reading a mucky boat. Mm. Bet you are. Reading a mucky boat. His hand caressed the silken knee. Yeah. Haven't you any work to do, Stan? Just waiting to go into the toilet, Mr. Shadrach. Yes, his thoughts. Some of you spend too much time down here. Far too much time. You better go up to the office. I've got to go out. Is that you, Mr. Shadrach? Is that you, Mr. Shadrach? Yes. There's someone waiting to come in there. I was wondering if I could have a word with you uh, before you go out. Huh? I was wondering if I could have a word with you before you go out. It's about time we had a little talk. 
Well, I haven't got time now, Fisher. You'll have to see me at lunchtime. Uh, very good, Mrs. Shadrach. I started out as a councillor. I had public conveniences. I had then to look after. No tells a young councillor. Aye, I knows all this for fields when I were a lad, Charlie. Well, I, I had no but one clog on my feet in them days. All right. Yeah. Well, I tell you what. I mean, the workers nowadays, you see, you give them chop and serve near a week, they're not content. They don't know they're the ball. They're not content. They, they don't. They don't know when they're well off. They couldn't commit with me. No. I, there's always been an all right. It's all right in the middle. Well, that all us will be. Aye. You see, nowadays, young lads, they come down with the college ways and they want none of it. Wrong, you're not wrong. I say, is that that bird? What bird? They're getting a lift in that lorry. That bird that wanted you to go to France with her. Do you mean Liz? Yes. Where's she been this time, then? I don't know. She goes where she feels like. She's crazy. She just enjoys herself. Well, what's she do? Oh, all sorts. Waitress, typist. She worked at Butlin's last year. She works and she gets fed up and then she goes somewhere else. She's been all over. Oh, Papa. City Foods Limited to invite Danny to ceremoniously open this store. Uh, Danny Boom. It's all happening. <laughs> well, you've got a lot of relatives here this morning, haven't you? Who's that? Is that your auntie? <laughs> oh, no, it's my auntie. Hello, darling. Still slimming? Yes, I am now. <laughs> it's all happening. <laughs> No, thank you. I'm trying to give them up. <laughs> oh, the ribbon with, isn't it? <laughs> oh, just a minute, fellas, before you take any more. Uh, could I have a pretty girl from the audience to come up here and help me cut the tape, eh? Any pretty girl? Oh, we have got a lot to choose from, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about you, darling? Yeah, you in the brown. Well, would you mind coming up here? That's a good girl. Oh, round of applause. Very sporting girl. That's it. Hey, what about a kiss to start us off, eh? Woo! It's all happened. Oh, it's one of camera. Ready, girl? He's dozed off. Hey, well, got those things for you. What things? Passion pills. What else did I get for you? Hey, let's have a look. Where'd you get them? This mate of mine fetched them back from Singapore. So I'll bet they're bloody aspirin. What? Hey, steady on, they'll give you the screaming ad dabs. One of these, two two and nines at the regal, a bag of chips, and you're away. Good afternoon, sir. Isn't it time your lads packed up? Yes, sir. Just off, Councillor. Oh. Uh, I'm just waiting to see Mr. Shadrach, Councillor. Well, you might give the floor a bit of a wipe up. Idle Drack or Broad Acres, a novel by William Fisher, Chapter One. Ned Leather nervously fingered his cap as he faced the portly owner of Allroyd's Mill. Sorry, lad. No work today, he said. Sorry, lad, no work today, he said. Little Jack, a novel by Bill Fisher. No, no, a novel by William Fisher. William L. Fisher. William D. L. Fisher. William D. Lashwood Fisher. William Fingal or Flaherty Wheels Fisher are a critical biography. Um, uh, first of all, Mr. Shadrach, I'd like to thank you for what has been a very happy stay with the firm. Uh, but I really do feel that I must seize this, um, this new opportunity uh, with both hands. I'm sure you'll appreciate my position. And of course, need I say, uh, the offer of a partnership with yourself and Mr. Duxbury is an extremely attractive incentive for me. Uh, but unfortunately, my ambitions lie in other fields. 
course. Of course, London's a big place. <clears throat> it's a very big place, Mr. Shadrach. A man can lose himself in London. Lose himself. Lose himself. Lose himself. Lose himself in the London. Him myself. Him myself. Never in the field of human conflict has so much. One, two, three, four, testing. Emmanuel Shadrach, this is your life. This is your life, Mr. Shadrach. Your life, Mr. Shadrach. Your life, Shadi, Adi, 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 Adrak. Your life. Oi, Shadras! <laughs> My singing didn't put you off. <coughs> you know, by the time we're burying you, you'll be going off in one of these. Plastic, you know that? Yes, you see, people don't realize. It's all clean lines nowadays. All these frills and fancies are going out. It's all old. Same as I tell Councillor Duxbury, you've got to move with the times. No use living in one style and dying in another, is it? <laughs> Quite. Sit down, make yourself at home. Oh, thank you. <coughs> mm -hmm. So you're thinking of leaving us, hey? Is that it? Well, I was thinking, uh, since this new opportunity is... Uh, uh... Now succeeded in obtaining a post with Mr. Danny Boone. It's the comic, isn't it? A uh, comedian. Yes. yes. Very, very clever fellow. So that's your ambition, is it? Script writing? Oh, yes, it always has been. You get a salary each week, then, or do you get paid by the job? Uh, well, it's, uh, very, very difficult to say, really. Yeah. Now, you don't need me to tell you that it's very, very unprofessional, a letter like this. Is it? Nobody wants to stand in your way, Fisher. Don't think that. But it's felt you might have gone about it in a more satisfactory manner. We were hoping, you see, we were hoping you'd try and get one or two things cleared up before you took a step like this. Oh, yes, well, I, I realise that... You see, there's those calendars to be explained, for one thing. What calendars? I think you know what calendars, my friend. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, you see, there's been a bit of a misunderstanding. No, no, it wasn't a misunderstanding, Fisher. No, it's just that two or three hundred calendars didn't get posted, to my knowledge. We've got to get this cleared up, you see, Fisher. We've got to get it cleared up. And implemented. If, if it's a question of payment, um... Uh, uh -huh. Now, wait a minute. Wait just one little minute. It's not as easy as that, you see. There's the goodwill to consider. Those calendars were for goodwill. We can't understand why you didn't send them out. For... I mean, we don't buy calendars just so that you can go out and chuck them on the fire, you know. That's not what we're in business for. And then there's this other matter. Oh, what other matter? Oh, you're saying, what other matter? It's a matter of the postage money, isn't there? Just a minute. Good afternoon. In connection with the late Mr. Matheson, isn't it? So would you wait in here? Right, here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Shan't keep you one moment. Then there's his library books. We'll have them to take back. Yes. Yes, well, now, as I was saying, Fisher, there are discrepancies in the postage book. I've been trying to get some sense out of your figures here. Uh, oh, yes. <clears throat> Curious system of bookkeeping you seem to have adopted. Uh, no, you see, this is my own personal double entry method, uh, uh, only it's not quite up to date. Uh, I'm sorry if there's been any inconvenience. Inconvenience? It's not a question of inconvenience. Anyway, I have to tell you, Fisher, that under the circumstances, there's no question about accepting your resignation. We may have to take some legal action. I don't know. I'll talk to you about it on Monday. 
Yes, now. I was just saying, you've got a gloomy job. <laughs> uh, now, have you got the deposit? So I went up to the third floor and into the soft furnishing department. And, oh, Billy, they've got some lovely materials. I saw some lovely stuff for the curtains. Honestly, Pet, you'll love it. It's sort of, um, well, a turquoise, really. And it's got lovely little squiggles, sort of, um, well, like wine glasses. Oh, it's yes, very nice. Mm. The only trouble is, if we get that yellow carpet, it won't match. Still, that's my department, Pet. Mm. I don't know, darling. I, I still say this ring's too big. Why won't you let me get it altered? Oh, I don't think it's too big. Anyway, I want everyone to see it first. Don't blame me if you lose this. Oh, you do worry so, Billy. That's why I love you. Well, darling, you will always love me, won't you? Of course I will, Pet. Well, then, uh, uh, give me the ring. Then. No. You can have it back on Tuesday, then it'll be there forever. Forever and ever. Right, so, go on, then, give it me. No. Give me the Carween ring before... Billy! I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, darling. I... I'm really not myself today. <clears throat> it's a good job I've got these to keep me going. What are they? Yeah. Energy tablets. Would you like a couple? No, thank you, Pet. Yes, it'll do you good. Oh, will it taste all right? Oh, it tastes fine. Just drink it some. Then we'll go for a walk where it's quiet. Oh, Billy, it's beautiful. Oh. With you, dearest mother and darling dad, happy were the years we had. And it is comfort in our pain, you are now together again. Isn't that nice? Charming. Oh, oh, Billy, look. Oh, oh there's a whole family in there. Oh, isn't it sweet? Fabulous. Ah, they're all dead. What a shame. Darling? Hmm? How do you feel? Ah, contented. Uh, you don't feel, you know, restless? No. No. Barbara? Hmm? Do you think it's wrong for people to have, uh, you know, uh, uh, feelings? Not if they genuinely love each other. Like we do. Uh, yes. What do you think it's wrong of me to have the feelings? Well, I think we ought to be married first. Oh, I love you, darling. <laughs> love you, pet. Dear, really and truly. Of course I do. Oh, sticky fingers. Are you looking forward to getting married? Oh, I think about it every minute of the day. Darling. Billy! Oh. Oh, promise me you'll never fall in love with anybody else. Of course not, then. Now, come on, let's talk about our cottage. Yes, well, we'll have a lovely cottage down in Devon. Devon, yes. We'll have a lovely garden with roses and daffodils and a lovely lawn with a little swing for little Billy and little, little Barbara, Barbara to play on. Uh -huh. We'll have our meals down by the lily pond in the summer. Oh, Oh, do you think a lily pond's safe? I mean, what if the kiddies wandered too near and fell in? We'll build a wall around it. I mean, we needn't have a pond at all. We'll have an old well. It's an old brick well where we draw the water. We'd we'll make it our wishing well. Billy, are you feeling all right? Of course, darling, why? Well, look where your hand is. Oh. Well, don't you want me to touch you? Well, it... Seems indecent somehow. You know you're making me ill, don't you? Oh, poor pet, why am I making you ill? Surely you've heard of all well, of repressions. <laughs> the nervous reactions of a man who's not. I know what you mean, pet, but we must be patient. We must. I mean, we'd only regret it. Well, just have one more energy tablet. No, thank you, Pet. I'm going to have an orange. But I'm going to have a... You and your bloody oranges! <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, darling. I, I've had a terrible morning. I've 
come about a ring. Oh, yes. An engagement ring. We yes. brought in for alteration. Oh, I see. What name is it, madam? We brought it in, so it should be under Fisher. Fisher, just a moment. Oh, if you give you my name, it'll be Diana's Corrigan. Corrigan, just a moment. Fisher Corrigan, Fisher Corrigan, Fisher Corrigan. But a farmer. No, no, Fisher. No. Fisher. No. Hey, what was that? Where? At the bottom. No, Cor that's Cor Corcoran. Anyway, it's a cuckoo clock. When did it come in? Oh, on Wednesday, I think. So he said. Uh, Dwelling? Mm hmm? Are you still coming for your tea tomorrow? Oh, of course. Uh, well, if you are, there are some things we've got to get cleared up uh, and implemented. What things? Well, you know that I've got a fairly vivid imagination, don't you, darling? Well, you have to have. You're going to be a scriptwriter, don't you? Well, quite. Well, being a scriptwriter, I'm perhaps at times a bit inclined to let my imagination run away with me, as you know. You don't mean you've been telling me lies. Well, not lies exactly, uh, but I suppose I've been, you know, exaggerating some things a bit, uh, being a scriptwriter. I mean, for instance, there's that business about me father, him getting danger money on a petrol tanker. You mean he's not on a petrol tanker? He wasn't even in the Navy. Well, what was he then? Well, he was a conscientious object. Um, <laughs> no, no, he wasn't anything. He wasn't fit. He has trouble with his knee. How many other lies have you been telling me? Uh, my sister. Don't tell me I haven't got a sister. Well, I did have, but she's dead. If you're still coming for your tea tomorrow, they never talk about her. Oh, I'm just not good enough for you, you know, Barbara. If you want to give me that engagement ring back, I'll understand. I forgive you, Pet. But promise me one thing. That I'll never lie to you again. Mm. I'll never lie to you again. Never. I promise. <laughs> Billy, are we going dancing tonight? Billy, are we going dancing tonight to the Roxy? Uh, don't say anything. <clears throat> That's Arthur's mother. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mrs. Crabtree. Uh, I don't think you met my sister, Sheila. Uh, Sheila, Mrs. Crabtree. Don't you try and be clever with me, young man. I happen to know Barbara very well indeed. <laughs> I, I, I catch your bus, actually. Billy! Um, I should watch you. Yes, Jane Wildblood, just coming up the last fence. Will it be a clear round? Uh, no, I'm afraid oh. she's... I'm afraid she's down there. She, she was completely unseated. The building fence is too high. Yes, <laughs> they tumble down. But of course she will be penalised, and that does not spoil her chances for a place to jump. Is that our Billy? His old raincoat's been in bathroom all morning. And if it isn't our Billy, where's his old raincoat been then? What? Don't you be so cheeky. Well, what time do you call this? Uh, Twenty-seven minutes, uh, thirteen seconds past two. I've had a very eventful morning. Well, don't pick. You seem to think I've nothing else to do but cook. Well, you get no dinner. I've finished cooking for one day. You want to start coming home over dinner time instead of getting about town after a bloody day? Good afternoon, Father. I've not sat down all morning. If I'm not sick, I'm doing this for you. Do you realise that? You've got that Barbara coming for a tea tomorrow, but you won't do anything, will you? With no consideration. She sounds such a nice girl, yes. Miss Barbara. You go and answer that bell. Go on, get to that. You're idle and scruffy and, and you've no manners. What are manners? Talk some sense, man. If that's what they learned when they went to grammar school, thank God I'm bloody ignorant. Ah, oh, confession. Hey, don't you be so cheeky. You! Hello, Rita. Uh, uh, just a minute. Who is it, Billy? Uh, just a minute. Speak all you think, think all you speak, speak. Yes, you rotten lying cross eyed git, you're nothing else. Hello, Rita. Sorry, I can't ask you. We're having a chimney swept. Oh, oh they'll be Peter. having you swept before I finished. It might just interest you to know I have been down to that jeweller's and they have never heard of you. Never mind that flaming ring. Uh, you must have gone to the wrong shop. Oh, must I? Well, I didn't. I went to the right shop. Henderson's in Bridge Street. That's funny. Uh, did you see Mr. McMichael? I don't know. I saw the fellow behind the counter. Oh, well, that's it. You should have asked Miss McMichael in the workshop. It is my godfather. He's doing it privately. You are rotten to me, Billy. It's true. Ask me, Dad, if you don't believe me. Ask me, Uncle Ernest. Dear old Uncle Ernest. 
Oh, I don't know where I am with you, Billy. We're supposed to be engaged if you did but know it. Well, I said you didn't want to marry me. I did not. I said I wasn't going to live in a rotten cottage in rotten Devon. So don't you come that one with me. I want that ring back and I want it tonight. Oh, well, uh, that's just it. I've got to stay in tonight to play Monopoly with my Uncle Ernest. It's his birthday. Oh, Monopoly. I'll tell you what you're doing tonight. You're taking me dancing to the Roxy. So I'll see you outside at seven. And don't you be late, right? Mr. Barbara. I mean, Rita. Oh, well... Afternoon. Afternoon. Hey, come in here, you. Who's she supposed to be? Well, just a friend. That's not the one that's going to a tea tomorrow, is it? Uh, no, that's Barbara. Well, who's this one, then? Just a friend. She was just passing. Uh, uh, actually, she's gone to see her Uncle Ernest. He lives up Cragside on that new estate. Well, they've all new houses up there. I thought you were thinking of getting engaged. Some has two bedrooms. Uh, yes. And well, some has three bedrooms. You can't carry on like this, you know, messing about with one lass after another. No, I realise that, Dad. Well, if you I are going to get engaged, I don't see why you're going to wait for a bit. Some has bathrooms I upstairs, she... and some has bathrooms she... downstairs. I don't believe in interfering, but if you're going to get engaged, well, bloody get engaged. If you're not, well, don't bloody bother. But don't come to me and say that I tried to stop you doing it. Look, look, it's not that simple, Dad. I haven't really decided what I want to do yet. Well, you couldn't do any worse than me and your mother were when we started. Well, we hadn't to eight Mr. Up together. I told her, I said, you don't get married till you're 21. No, well, we have to manage. Look, it's not a question of managing, Dad. It's just that I haven't made me mind up yet. Well, do you want to make your mind up pretty smartly, too, before she makes it up for you? you see, if I go to London... When you're married 21, I? I said, you can do as you like, I said. Look, just Only a minute, I said, Grandma. Don't come so, running to me if you can't manage. Look, just because a minute, I said, Grandma. you've got to make up with what... For God's sake, up. belt up! You... What? What did you say? Say that again. No, 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 I've made remarks. Talk bloody properly when you talk to me. What did you say to your grandma? Now, what do you say? Ignorant, that's what you are, isn't it? Ignorant, that's what it is, isn't it? Look out, Jeffrey, that shirt's clean. I'll clean shirt him in a minute, answer his grandmother back like that. Leave him alone. What, him and his fountain pens and bloody suede shoes. If he wants to go to London, he can bloody well go. Oh, but he's not. I'll tell you, I'll finish with him, he can go. Oh, but he's not. I'll tell you, he can pack his things and get going. Oh, but he's not, Jeffrey. I'm telling you, he's not. Look, I can explain all this. Yes, it's ever since he started working. Work. Grumbling about this, grumbling about that. If it isn't his boiled egg, it's something oh, else. Shut yes, up. so what do you do? Buy him special bloody cornflakes. What does that mean? And why? Because there's a bloody plastic submarine in the packet he wants put in away. Now, you just listen to me, Geoffrey. He's not old enough to go to London or anywhere else. No, old enough. He's old enough and daft enough. He wants to get into the bloody army. That's what he yes, wants to do. Yes, you want to get into the bloody army as well. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, hold your noise, Geoffrey. <laughs> I can't stand much more. I've been cooking in here since I don't... Well, know. I know, but what's it like? Every day it's the same. He gets on my... Ma'am! Oh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, let's drop it. Uh, Ma'am! Ma'am, yeah. it's Gran. I, I think she's had another of her do's. Now look what you've done. Get her tablets, Geoffrey. Hey, go get them tablets out of the dressing table drawer. Oh. Go on, go oh, on. Right. Oh. Don't let her go. <laughs> We must get around to the couch. Yeah, She'll be all right. right. Here we are. You'll be all right, love. You'll be all right. Oh, come on, get out of it. I can't wait all day for you. She wants to burn some feathers. Never mind pills. Here you are now. Well, that's it. Put it in your mouth. Oh. Come on. Oh. Nice sip. Oh. That's it's it. your eyes. Right. As all right as she'll ever be. All right. Well, I'll be off then. Oh. Well, where's he going? Oh, with more to worry about than him. No, no, you're all right, love. Ah, <laughs> oh, then, lad. Good afternoon, Councillor. Well, it's a grand day for it. Aye. Papa has been watching football, eh? Nay, I'm just bound for a walk over the mower. Ah, what's they got there, then? What, crown jewels? Uh, no gramophone records. LPs. Hey, <laughs> they weren't out like that when I were a lad. No record players. We had to make our own music if we wanted it. Millboy's choir we used to have. Then there were chapel choir. 
You see, there were two chapel choirs because there was another chapel down Moor Cross Road. Ah, uh, but they're all coming down, all the old buildings. Trams, they've gone. City centre, that's all new. Ah, uh, you, could, you could get a glass of beer, meat pie, cigarettes, matches and change out at fourpence. Aye. Uh, uh, just to think I could climb down yonder. Don't near that break the neck, Councillor. Well, I have to manage it, whether or no. I'm going down to the police station. What, what, what's that going there for? Oh, we're pulling it down. <laughs> That's not his, that. Oh, well, we are that. All your encourages and all are going. Well, anyway, I'll be on my way now, Councillor. So, uh, afternoon. Uh, I say. Come here. You're a right one with them calendars, aren't you? Hey, I thought there'd more sense than that, lad. So, you're planning to go to London, then, eh? Aye. Just about freight with this place. How do you mean? Why, <laughs> it's neither muckling nor mickling, is it? That taking a rise out of me, young man? No, sir. Well, then, just talk as thy father and mother brought thee up to talk. I had no education. I had to educate myself. But that's no reason to mock me. Now then, I don't know what else to do yet. I haven't decided. But listen, can you take a bit of advice? Yes, sir. Now, you're a young man. You've got a long way to go, but you can't do it by yourself. Now, think on. The grandma's poorly. Well, I'm... Glad to have had the chance of a word with you. Oh. Well, think on. Oh, we'll be back in London in about three hours' time, so I'll call you there. Okay. Go. They've charged us for four single rooms. And they let the code in hers. Phone calls in London, London, Luton. Luton? Excuse me. Yeah? Have you anything to do with Mr. Boone? Yes, I'm his manager. Can I help you? Well, I was wondering if, if I could have a word with him. I've got an appointment because he's an extremely busy man. No, and I, I have, have written. Somebody's had four and six with a phone call. Do you know him? No, I've never seen him before. Oh, I'm by Don't turn him away, Bertie. Got three gross of these to unload. Now, what's your name, son? I'm Billy Fisher. To Billy. I haven't put with love. You know, people might get the wrong idea. Have you seen you? No, I, I sent you some of my scripts. Scripts? You, you sent me some scripts? Yes. You wrote me a letter. You said that I was to call and see your manager. Oh, oh, did you? And, and here you are, eh? <laughs> well, so, so you want to be a script writer, eh, uh, Billy? Uh, yeah. Well, it's a great life, you know, it really is. Now, how's it going, eh? You sold any material yet, have you? Uh, well, I, I was hoping that you would be able to use me uh, in some way uh, as a scriptwriter. Oh, oh, well, that's just it, Billy. You see, I don't maintain a personal scriptwriter. I've got enough to do supporting these layabouts here. <laughs> of course, I'm always in the market for individual gags, you know, and I pay pro rata. Uh, you, you ever up in London? Well, now and again. Oh, well, look, I'll tell you what you do. You, you pop in and see me sometime at the office, eh? Uh, we'll have a bit of a chat. Well, good luck then, Billy, and uh, keep riding, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, have you been up there? Why don't you lock down me for a bottle of food? Has he stood you up then? Oh, get off your knees. Come in with us, we'll take you home. One we told don't take her home. Yeah, we'll take you home. Come on. Come on. Right then. Yeah. Hey, not the three of the ants. <laughs> Hello, Liz. Hello, Billy. I knew you were back. Oh, news travels fast. Where have you been this time? Here and there. Up and down. Round and about. <laughs> Why didn't you ring me up? I was going to. Oh, thank you very much. No, really, I was going to then. I knew you'd be here tonight. Yes, so I am here, my dear. Me and a few others. Well, how's everything with you? Fine. As a script writing and Arthur. And that book, how's that book coming along? Oh, I've finished it. It's going to be published next Christmas. Count five and tell the truth. Oh, well. 
I haven't started writing yet. Oh, bad as ever. I've written some scripts now. Have you? On Ace? Yeah, I've been offered a job in London script writing. No. It's for the comedian, Danny Bones. Really? I met him this morning. He was opening the supermarket and he asked me to cut the tape for him. So I noticed it's in the paper. <laughs> well, when are you going? Oh, soon. Sure. When soon? Well, as uh, soon as I can manage. It's a bit vague, isn't it? Why don't you go now? Well, it's, it's difficult. No, it's not. It's easy. You get on a train and four hours later, there you are in London. It's easy for you. You've had the practice. Shall we go for a walk or something? Soon. Oh, thank you. Hey, Twisterella. Eh? It's my song, me and Arthur wrote it. Honestly? Your words of music by Fisher and Crabtree. We gave it to him months ago. They never said we were going to play it tonight. Did you really write it, Billy? Of course I did. Isn't it great? Congratulations. Oh, just a little thing I scribbled on the back of an old menu in a fish restaurant. And today I suppose that menu's worth hundreds of pounds. Yes, the price of fish has risen steeply since the war, my dear. <laughs> He's got the kind of shake that series. Hang on a minute. There's somebody over there I'm anxious to avoid. Hello, darling. We've been waiting outside for half an hour. Actually, let's see you inside. Oh. Come on, let's dance anyway. <laughs> There's my like song. It. It's my song. Me and Arthur wrote it. Did you pet? It? Yeah. It's the first time they've played it. You can't do it. Of course you can. Come on, like this with your legs. Oh, what hips, you hips, 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 the hips. No, pet. Come on, let's have an orange squash. Come on. <laughs> Oh, look, what crawled out the Colby? Hello, Rita. Uh, I don't think you met Barbara. Uh, Barbara, this is Rita. Rita, this is Barbara. I'm very glad you've come, because I think I owe you a word of explanation. A word of explanation? Oh, just get back in the trees with the other maggots. Billy, will you kindly tell me who this girl is? Oh, get Madame Fancy Knickers. I suppose she's your rotten sister. I thought she was supposed to be in a rotten iron lung. Well, for your information, I happen to be Billy's fiance. Well, for your information, he happens to be engaged to me, in front of a witness. I think I can explain all this. You can explain till you're blue in the rotten face. It'll make no difference to me. Look, I realise this must not seem very confusing to you, Rita. But the thing is, I thought Barbara had broken the engagement off. Billy, you gave that ring to me. Well, you see, there's been a bit of a mix-up, Rita. Yes, there has. Well, you don't handle the goods unless you intend to buy. Oh, you're rotten. Uh, does this mean you're breaking the engagement off, Rita? You don't get out of it like that. I want that ring. I I've got to know, Billy. Have you been having re relations with this girl? Oh, what do you think he's been doing? Knitting a all over? Give me that ring. It's mine. I shall give the ring back to Billy if and when I break off the engagement. Are you going to give me that ring? Or aren't you? Don't you threaten me. I won't threaten you. I'll flatten you. Now take off that ring. No, it's Come on. Mine. Give it to me. No. It's no. mine. Right, come on, get it. You had it, Fisher, mate. You had it. Ladies and gentlemen, that last number we just played you was called Twisterella. It's a brand new one, and it's written by two of our local boys here, Arthur Crabtree. What's here, Arthur? And his colleague, Billy Fisher. Now, Billy's somewhere in the hall, I know. He's probably celebrating some wonderful news he's had today. There he is. Billy Fisher, the man himself. Congratulations, Billy. We've just heard of your wonderful job in London, writing scripts for the comedian, Danny Boo. Congratulations and best of luck. Three <laughs> lawyers! What do you want to tell him that for? Why not? It's all fixed up, isn't it? You want to mind your own business? Yes, mate, and that's what you want to do as well. Just listen. I don't know what tale you've been telling my mother about Barbara being the sister of yours. 
She's been going on at me all afternoon, so just pack it in. And draw. Mr. William Fisher, what's it on the telephone, please? Mr. William Fisher. Mr. William Fisher, wanted on the telephone. Let's go. Will Mr. William Fisher please come to the telephone? Thank you. Please. Do you find life difficult? Oh, I wish it was something you could tear up and start again. You know, you know, like starting a new page in an exercise book. It's been done, turning over a new leaf. And I turn over a new leaf every day. But the blocks show through. Billy? Mr. William Fisher, what's it on the telephone? Yes, it sounds like it, doesn't it? No, I do, Liz, I do. Say it properly, then. <laughs> well, I do, Liz, I do. I want to marry you, you know, Billy. Oh, I think I get engaged a bit too often. No, I don't want to get engaged. I want to get married. Well, uh, we will one day. Yes, one day. me to do that night when we were walking through the park and I said another night yes well it's another night tonight isn't it Are you sure yes uh well what what Billy mm-hmm you know, there have been others, don't you? Oh, uh, well, I... Somehow I imagine that there might have been. Shall I tell you about it? Uh, no, no. Uh... Well, go on, then tell me about it. No, not now. No, tell me about it. You think that's why I'm always going away, don't you? I don't know. Oh, it's not that. It's... Sometimes I want to go away. It's not you, Billy. It's this town. It's the people we know. I, I don't like knowing everybody. I don't like becoming a part of things. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do, Liz, I do. What I'd like to be is invisible. I'd like to be able to move around without having to explain anything. Liz, listen. Do you know what I do? And I want to feel invisible. Uh, well, I, I, I've never told anybody before. I have a sort of a... Well, it's an imaginary country. Where I go, it has its own people. Do you own... do that? I knew you would. Oh, Billy, why are we so alike? You know I can read your thoughts. A town. Oh, no, no, no. This is more than a town. It's a whole country. I'm supposed to be the Prime Minister and you're the Foreign Secretary or oh, something. thank you. Now, I think about it for hours. Sometimes I think if we were married with a house of our own, we could just sit and imagine ourselves there. Yes, we could. Oh, I want a room in the house with a green baize door. It'd be a big room. And when we go in, it's through the door. That's it. That's our country. Nobody else will be allowed in at all. Uh, and I thought we could make models of the principal cities and out of cardboard. Could have toy soldiers painted for the people. We could draw maps. If you place to go on a rainy afternoon, we could go there. Nobody would find us. We could design our own newspapers. We could even make uniforms if we wanted to. It would be our country. Let's have a model train that the kids won't be allowed to use. Oh, please, please. Will you marry me? Yes, Billy. Look, whoever out there is going to get the bastard teeth knocked down their throats. I'm the Prime Minister and you're the Foreign Secretary. <laughs> oh, something. Leave them, oh. Billy. Oh, leave them. It's not worth it. The whole place isn't worth it. Bastards. Look, Billy. Why don't you go to London? I'll come with you. Oh, uh, it'd be marvellous if we could. But 
We can, Billy, we can. What's there to stop us? Well, I mean, there are all sorts of arrangements to make. No, there's not. You just buy a ticket. You buy a ticket and get on a train. That's all you have to do. You can't just go. Yes, you can. We could go tonight. No. There's a midnight train. It gets into London at 7 o'clock. Well, tonight, Liz? Yes, 12.05 from Central Station. We'll be in London tomorrow. Breakfast at Lyons. Hyde Park in the afternoon. Piccadilly tomorrow evening. Look, what time is it? Uh, it's just after 10. I'm going, Billy. You're coming with me. Yes, Liz. I'm coming. Sure? I, I'm coming with you. <laughs> right. I'll meet you at the barrier about 12 o'clock, all right? Fine, yeah. Hey, what, you can tell your father and mother. Oh, they know about it already, more or less. Billy, you won't let me down, will you? No, of course I won't. Come on. <laughs> right, go back with that thing. <laughs> We're going to London! <laughs> father, the men! They're coming up the drive! <laughs> Oh, oh, I see. She's still with her, is she? Right, thank you very much. Goodbye. Well, what time of night do you call this? It's only ten. Why, do you want some chips bring in? Never mind chips. They're down at the infirmary. Oh? Your mother and your grandmother, who the hell do you think? Your grandmother's been taken badly again. Why, what's up with her? Well, it's always up with her. You should know. Hey, I've been ringing that bloody dance hall for the past hour, trying to get word to you. Where are you going? Where you say you're going? Is it serious or something? Your mother wants you down at the infirmary. Go on. Better go and get yourself a taxi ordered. Speedway taxis. Uh, could you send a cab to 23 Ringway Crescent, please? It's to go to the infirmary. Oh, good, good. Thank you. Be about ten minutes. You don't go up here. No, I'm just... You don't go up there, I said. I'm just going to get washed. Oh, well, you can stop mucking then. I'm telling you, don't go up there. I'm just about fed up with you, with your hiding and your meddling ways and all other things besides. Why, what's up? What's up? What did you do with that letter from your mother's? What letter? That letter that you promised to post to her for housewife's choice. Well, I told her once I posted it. You posted bloody nothing. Well, I did post it. Uh, just, that's just the rough copy. Don't come telling me your lies. I found this upstairs in the wardrobe. Hey, what about them calendars as well? What calendars? I'll oh, give you what if you don't stop saying. What, what to me, young man? You can't keep your hands off nothing, can you? But I've got it all from Councillor Duxbury. And what have you been doing with their petty cash? You've made me into a bloody laughingstock. And where's that monkey wrench out of my garage? I don't know. What would I want with a monkey wrench? What do you want with 200 calendars? You're not right in your bloody head. But I'm not right. I'm not right. Look, I didn't want to work for Shadrach and Flaming. Don't Fox bloody Fox. shout at me. I'll knock you into the middle of next week. God, give me strength. Strength? He wants to give you some sense. Yeah, like a bloody Mary Ann. You ought to be grateful. You've got a job in an office. Grateful, grateful, grateful for this, grateful for that. That's all I've ever heard. Grateful you let me go to the grammar school. Been anything that once since the first day I went there. Well, it's a chance we never had. And don't we bloody well know it. I've got to be grateful for winning me on scholarship. And what did you say when I came running home to tell you I'd won it? That you'd have to pay for the uniform and I'd have to be grateful. And I'm supposed to be grateful to Sharak and Stinking Duxbury for letting me sit at one of the rotten stinking desks all day. Well, you took the bloody job on and you'll stop there till all that money's paid back. Look, I'm not. I'm leaving. What do you mean you're leaving? I'm going to London. London? What the hell do you think you can do in London? Right, script. Don't talk so bloody wet. You want to do a proper day's work. Who should have run this business when I'm gone? You once told me you didn't want me in the business. Only because you were too bloody idle, that's all. Somebody's got to carry it on. Who's going to keep your mother? You're not retiring, are you? I'll give you a kick up the back, sir, if you talk to me like that. I'm not arguing about it, Dad. I'm going. Go, then. I'm finished with you. I don't think you're going to take my suitcase with you, either. Three years back, did it? All right now, but ooh, a good time, dear. I tell you. We looked all over for you, lad. Where's my grandma? She's there. 
They've got that black doctor to her. She can't talk. We're, we're just waiting. <coughs> She was all right just after you went out. Then when your father came home tonight, we were all just watching television, and, and she slumps forward in her chair, and, and she started to slap her, just like a, just like a baby. Will she be all right? I don't know, lad. I don't know. Well, you've got yourself into a fine mess, haven't you? So it would seem. I'm only thankful she knows nothing about it. <coughs> why didn't you post that letter of mine to our wife's Joyce? I did post it. I just wrote it out again, that's all. What for? Well, there was, there was some mistakes in it. Yes. I, I thought it'd stand a better chance if it was more grammatical, that's all. Oh, they can't all be Shakespeare's, can we? Anyway, we're going to sit down tomorrow and go over everything you've done and everything you've taken. Yes, well, well, I won't be here tomorrow. How do you mean? I, I'm going to London. I'd, I'd have been at the station already, well, if it hadn't been for Grandma. If you're in any more trouble, Billy, it's not something you can leave behind you, you know. You, you put it in your suitcase and you take it with you. Look, Mother, I've said I'm going, and, and I'm definitely going. Mrs. Fisher, would you come this way, please? Ma died at seven minutes past eleven. Do you want to go in and see her? Uh, no. train you're supposed to be catching? Uh, midnight. So, I've got to go. Well, I, well, I won't catch you. Yeah. Well, you haven't got any money. Yes, I have. I've, I've managed to save a few pounds. Do you want me to get you a taxi? No, no, I, I've got some papers to sign first. We don't say much, but but we need you at home, lad. Yes, well, I mean, I, I won't be away for long. I'll, you know, I'll just get fixed up. Well, I can come home next weekend. <coughs> See, I've got to go. I'll miss the train. Sorry about me, Grandma. Sam? Sam? Uh, a ticket to London. Single or return? No, single. Two pound eight and three, please. Out of the cheese. Hello, Rita. I'm forced to there we come. Uh, what happened to Barbara then? I don't know, I don't care. You think you're somebody, don't you? I'll tell you something. You're not. You're nobody. I'm sorry. You can have the ring for all I care. Well, that ring? 
I wouldn't touch it. Go on, get away. You're just muck. Hello? I had to walk. Oh, never mind. Do you good? Just missed the last bus. I saw it going. I turned the corner and there it was, moving on. Oh, yeah. So I walked. I went through the back streets. I passed my old school. So. Come on, you birds. We can't wait all night. All right, go oh, yeah. Me and five schnorrers behind. You want the tickets? Tough. Oh. Thank you, Well, I seem to have three face cloths and no toothbrush. Still, I can borrow yours, can't I? Yes. I've got some cigarettes. Yes, I've got some. John! No. We can't get anything to eat on this train, can we? Never mind, I've got some sandwiches with me. Would you like me to get you a drink? No, not really. Penzance. Wait a minute. Um, there's a milk machine on the station. I can go and get you some. I don't really want anything. No, it'll only take a minute. Uh, save me, please. Well, hurry up, Billy. Just gonna get some milk. You haven't got long.